Armacor Law, the corporation, a type of migrant organization that uses its own combat capabilities as a commodity. It maintains a powerful force centered on autonomous weapons that cannot be operated by other organizations. In the resistance first counterinsurgency operation, they provided strength to the city, but ultimately landed an indiscriminate attack that led to the city's collapse. The name corporation is said to have been derived from an organization of the same name that existed before the devastation of the world. There is almost no information about the company except that it has intervened in the battle between the city and the resistance and its home base. Total membership and purpose are also unknown. The corporation first appeared on the front page of history during the first counterinsurgency operation. However, the only members of the company that have been recorded are the chief in charge of the field and his assistant, Carol Drury. They intercepted the resistance by deploying many mercenaries based on the information from the operation of the resistance obtained by Tyrell. However, it was not until some time after the outbreak of the war that the company deployed their own forces during the second counterinsurgency operation, and even at that time, they were targeting individual mercenaries rather than the resistance, suggesting they did not intervene in the fighting simply to annihilate the resistance. The corporation deployed autonomous weapons in the city to engage the mercenary despite the security forces present. The chief recognised the mercenary who had overcame many difficulties as dangerous, but he also expressed his hope for the mercenary. The corporation then recruited Ardi for his hidden fighting talent and gave him an AC to clash with the mercenary. When the representative was detained by the resistance, they destroyed the city with an attack using autonomous weapons. The purpose of these actions is also unknown in detail. However, it is likely that the aim was to put the mercenary in a more difficult situation and to determine the potential of the mercenary himself. In the end, the chief of the company challenged the mercenary to fight on his own, and after the battle, the company withdrew from the situation. However, this would not be the last we see of the corporation during this time, as after the battle of the city, the corporation would send R.D. out to take out the Dark Raven, only to fail, leading to the corporation to chase down the Dark Raven in one of their most powerful machines to date, Exosia. It's after this machine's defeat, however, the corporation seemed to vanish for a few years until the events of the Forgotten Story, where it is revealed that both Chief and Carol are AIs, programmed to protect the world and its people. It's here that the well-known Isaac rant about how he did not believe the AI, as humanity only destroys, and to him the only way to deal with them is total destruction. After this, the corporation themselves are not heard from again, as it seems Isaac would go with the AI to later become something like them. The corporation's history, while short, is not without its list of products, as being the only one able to use autonomous machines of war, these include the Ammon, the Ammon S, the Ammon A, and the Uthika. These, however, were simply small weapons of this type, as the corporation is noted to also have used large weapons like the LLL and the Exosia. That is seen only once in the story of Armored Core 5, however, it is reported there is another red version that shares designs like Primal Armor from the era of Armored Core 4. Saying this, what many will remember the corporation for is the armored cores they used during their time. As such, let us take a look at three. The first will be a mercenary the corporation hired, and since he is only seen working for them, I shall add him to this list. Silent Howler and its pilot, Cro-Magnon. While the pilot has little history, his AC seems to have avoided being documented. As such, I shall talk about it now. Silent Howler is classed as a highly mobile, highly defensive tetrapod armoured core, with all focus on mid to long range combat. This can be seen with its weapon choices with the USR-12V sniper rifle and the KO-5K3 sniper rifle being the craft's long range weapons, while its two rifles, the Lampordi RF-23 and the URF-15A Jezup, they are there for close to mid range combat. Howler also has the Habas HSM-201 high speed missiles for that added firepower too. While having a strong weakness to TE weapons, Silent Howler, as stated before, is best used in a long to mid-range combat style, starting off with by using the two sniper rifles to hit hard, before switching to the rifle to finish a foe off. Overall, while the inside parts of this unit remain unknown, for now the weapon choice should push a pilot to pick an FCS with a long-range capability, while also not forgetting about the missiles the craft uses. We move on to Chief's own personal armoured core, Hangman. While its loadout does change throughout its time in the story, the only time the Dark Raven will battle Hangman is with the loadout on screen now. Hangman is classed as a defense specialized heavy bipedal armored core, armed with two laser rifles, the LR-81 Kawasawa and the Lapsane LR-220. 
a single battle rifle, the URB-05R, and the long-range missiles, the UMM-20H Surratt. This AC focus seems to be on mid-range combat, with the missiles being used to allow Hangman to fall back to charge his weapons, the Kawasawa being the main weapon of this craft, and the one that requires charging it to cause more damage. It's what the pilot would be using to damage a foe before switching to the other laser rifle to finish the job. The battle rifle and missiles are there to keep the damage on Hangman's foe while it readies the Kawasawa. Hangman does suffer from a weakness to KE weapons, and energy management is a must with this AC, as it requires time and energy to really cause damage to its foe. Finally, to finish this report, we shall look at Vengeance, originally the craft of Jack Betty. RD is its pilot for the corporation, as such we shall look into it here. Vengeance is classed as a mobility specialised medium bipedal armoured corps, armed with the UEM-3 Mustaso pulse machine gun, the URF-50 Valdoza rifle, short-range missiles named the USM-13 Golbarga, and finally its most well-known part, the ultimate weapon, the Grind Blade. With a weakness to CE weapons, this AC is best at middle range combat, with the pulse machine gun offering fast but little damage, while the rifle is a solid damage dealer and offers a good range. The main feature of this AC is the grind blade, a weapon that can only be used once, however offers a very powerful one hit kill for most armoured core foes who it hits. This however is the issue, if it hits, as it requires to be charged up and a pilot must get in close to score a hit with this blade of death. Practice is the key here, However, a speedier foe will simply be able to keep its distance from this slow armoured core, as such the grind blade is an all-powerful weapon, but a pilot must know when to use it and not waste it. It's with this that the report on the corporation comes to an end. Skirmishes broke out across the globe as the three forces struggled for world domination. Army numbers swelled, and the once proud mercenaries found themselves ostracized for refusing to take sides. The world had come back from the brink of destruction. But the fighting only grew fiercer. It was the eve of what would come to be known as the Verdict War. This is the forgotten tale of a lone mercenary.